Well, as you all know, my name is Cyberul Islam, and it's fantastic to be here and to, to actually be the face of you know, the, the future of enterprise, not just for young people, but also for adults as well. Because I think the importance of entrepreneurship and enterprise within young people is the belief, the power, to be able to see vision in life and having that self-belief. Because where I grew up, in the borough of Tyre Hamlets in East London, young people were full of, full of you know, skepticism about their life, full of, you know, they, they weren't having that belief in them. They were seeking crime, violence, drugs and abuse, and they weren't helped by their parents. And I went through that exact same thing in life. Why? This negative atmosphere within, like, within a young person's life has such an effect. So it's about making a change. Making a change, seeing role models, seeing inspirations. And I've always followed life through like, a, through like an equation. Inspiration, knowledge, opportunity brings success. Now how can I use that to not just help myself, but also to help other young people within my own local community on a national scale and then on a global scale? And talking about inspiration, talking about enterprise, I've always looked up to one person, one person in my entire family, my cousin. My cousin was a real inspiration for me. Why? Because when he was 14, he set up his own business. He was the managing director of a company at the age of 14. His idea wasn't the greatest. He designed calendars for teachers. Put that aside. But to have managed a company at such a young age really inspired me. So I went up to him. I went up to him and said, cousin, can I work for you? Can I be the one designing these calendars for these teachers? And he said, fair enough. You're my cousin. You can do computer work. And so he employed me. And at that time, I was 13. And I was in, in school, doing my SATs and GCSEs and all, the, all those things. And what really came to me was, because he was my cousin, and because what he did, he earned 60 pounds in one whole academic year. 60 pounds. And to me, that felt like a, being a millionaire, because he didn't have to go and ask his parents for money to, to, to buy the crisp sweets and drinks. He had it right in his back pocket. <laughs> and I thought, wow, if I earned that 60 pounds, you know, the world is my oyster. And that was my inspiration. So I, I was working for him but for a limited amount of time. Well, apparently that's what I thought I was. Because he, because he was my cousin, I just sat back, relaxed, enjoying, thinking that 60 pounds would roll into my back pocket. And what happened? I've never received a letter through my post at that age, at the age of 13. So my cousin wrote a letter saying, Dear Sabirul Islam, and it was the first ever letter I, I, I received with the, with the company name. His company was called the Royal Dragons. And what happened? It didn't say much. He said, Dear Sabirul Islam, you're fired. I was hired and fired by my own flesh and blood at the age of 13. Now that made me think. Now that made me think that the reason is because I, I wanted to do something. I wanted to be like him. He was my inspiration. But to have fired me was horrible. It was one of the most horrible experiences of my life at that time. But what I learned from that was to, for a young person to experience such a negative factor in life is how you see that inspiration, how you turn it around and make it positive. You see roots for yourself in life. And young people don't often get that. To, to become a teen entrepreneur, to become a teenage entrepreneur, to be enterprising and to see success in life, you have to make mistakes. Mistakes come and go, but you don't just fall under the first hurdle. And so what happened? That 60 pounds he made, I wanted to beat that. He was a managing director. I wanted to be a CEO. So what happened? When I turned 14, I set up my own business called Veyron Technology. It was a web designing company, so I, grew, I got, a, got a group of six of my friends together, and it was an incredible journey. I didn't know anything about web design, yet one of my friends did. So what happened? He, ta he taught us all about the basics, the very simplest things about web designing within the space of four or five days. And because my cousin was selling to teachers in school, I said, I don't want to sell to teachers. I want to sell to corporate organizations, big, big businesses, the ABN Amros, the JP Morgans, the Merrill Lynch, all these massive, big investment banking companies. So I went up to them and said, we're young, creative, budding entrepreneurs who can help you design a website. Are you interested? We were approached about five or six. And almost all of them, apart from one, rejected us, Merrill Lynch.
Merrill Lynch said, wow, 14 year olds have just come up to us and said they would un want us to, to design websites. And it was an incredible journey. And within two weeks, I made over 2,000 pounds profit. 2,060 pounds was like a millionaire. But to have made 2,000 in the space of two weeks within with such a you know, limited amount of resources, it was incredible. And so for two years, I was doing this web design company. But then so I sense knocked into me that, hey, web design is too common. Too many people are doing it. It was great when you were 14, but 16, no way. <laughs> so with Merrill Lynch being my first clients, they came back to me. They came back to me at the age of 16 and said, Sabrul, we've been following your journey for the past two years. You set up your own business in the borough of Tower Hamlets, where young people see crime, violence, drugs, and abuse as a simple route forward. Yet you did something different. Whilst doing your GCSEs, you've earned your A's and your A stars. Fantastic. But we want to give you another opportunity to go to New York and learn how to trade in the stock market. And I thought, wow. To have been given such an opportunity because of what I've done is, is something phenomenal. And that is what young people don't understand. That once you take one route in life, millions more doors open. And that is opportunity. And for me, I thought, it's an incredible opportunity to go to New York. I went to, the, I went to New York in the Dow Jones, in the New York stock market, learn how to trade. I was working alongside professional traders for a two-week program. I came back, and they gave me $100,000. $100,000. Fantasy, not real. Fantasy money to trade in the fantasy stock market. And I lost all of that in one day. In one day, well, in the space of two hours, actually, to be precise. <laughs> but then he said, hey, you've made that mistake. You've learned from it. We're not giving you another 100K. So I thought, OK. I spent three months in the fantasy trade market, and in the fantasy stock market. And I thought, OK, I would want to live a fantasy life. I want to do the real thing. So at the age of 16, I became a, a part-time trader in the London Stock Exchange, under my dad's name. So. <laughs> But I was the one doing all the dealing, all the trading, and all that. And I made money out of that. I lost money, I made money, but it was an experience to do something different whilst in studies. I was doing my A-levels at the time. So what happened? Young people within my own area were coming up to me and saying, Sabrul, how on earth have you managed to set up your own business at the age of 14, being an entrepreneur, an investor at the age of 16? How on earth is that possible? And it did get really annoying. That too many were asking me that question. In fact, it got so annoying that I just said, uh, no, I, I can't help you. But then sense came back into me. Because I wanted to, to follow an, e an equation in life, that inspiration. Inspiration is very, very big. And that was the first thing that came to me. How can I inspire these young people from my own experience? So when I turned 17, I wrote my first book called The World at Your Feet, Turning Your Vision into Reality. And it was a self-published book because I approached, having written the book within a space of three months, I approached 40 different publishers, 40 different publishers to get the book published, and I got rejected by each and every one of those 40 publishers at the age of 17. Why? For two reasons. One, first of all, they didn't think that a 17-year-old could even write a good book. Secondly, they didn't think it, there, there was a market for it. But there were young people wanting my help, my advice. And so I pushed it forward. I self-published it myself. I designed it myself, marketed it myself, sold it myself. And within a space of nine months, I sold over 42,500 copies of that book. 42,500 copies. And it opened another door for me to provide more inspiration for young people, public speaking. So last year alone, in 2008, I spoke at 379 different events, of which 333 were schools which had teenagers, young people. And having inspired over 40,000 young people across the UK, now that said something. So what happened? All 40 publishers, each and every one of them, came back to me and said, Sabiro, we now want to publish your book. <laughs> and that was a great moment for me to go. I don't think so. <laughs> and it was the most beautiful experience in life to have rejected something so big. And, but what, what happened was my cousin, who initially f who fired me at the age of 13, came to me and said, don't get pride and arrogance wrong in life. Never get them wrong. 
and I, because I was being too arrogant. I felt so good and so hyped up that I could reject publishers when I needed their help. So what happened, Marshall Cavendish, who weren't one of those four, he came to me and said, Sabra, we want to take your book on a global scale. And I signed a contract with them that 10 months later, on June 18th this year, the book will get published. So I had this 10-month period to wait, wait for. So I was doing my public speaking, trying to inspire these young people. But what about the knowledge, the knowledge of the business? Inspiration, great. Now taking it to the next, next step, step of the equation, the knowledge. Where does the knowledge come from? And so I got a group of six young teenagers together and said, what do young people like doing? Playing games. They want to know what the world is about. And so I created my own board game within a 10-month period called Teen Entrepreneur to give young people the, the, uh, their experience of what business is about, what sales is about, what marketing is about, what the stock market is about, running their own businesses. And from, from just a business from scratch and how you develop that business into an international, international superstar company. You being a tycoon. And that was just a, an, in, you know, a phenomenal journey to have got six young 11 to 15 year olds with their knowledge of business put together and made a concept of a board game. So you didn't need a 40 year old's ideas of what business is because young people find that very boring. And that's true, they do. And so what happened on June 18th, the new book and the board game was launched. And that was just an incredible journey for me, to have given the inspiration and now providing them the knowledge, what happens next, giving them the opportunity. So before the opportunity came, what happened? I took a punt at something. I took a punt at six, I had to pay 600 pounds for a magazine back in, to, uh, back in 2008 to advertise what I was doing. And I didn't know anything much about marketing or advertising. But that ma magazine went into universities across the UK. That magazine went into every single university and it fell into the hands of a, a person in, in Lincoln University. And that kept on rolling on and on. And it fell into the hands of the wife of Nigeria's first, the wife of Nigeria's first president. And she gave me a call. She gave me a call and said, Sabrul, We've read your story on the magazine. We've seen your journey. It's an absolute inspiration. And so she invited me to speak at a summit in Nigeria where over 3,000 young people attended. And to have had my face on billboards and posters and magazines across the country was just, I felt like a celebrity there. And it was like the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced. And now going back to the day I was fired, the day I received that letter, if I hadn't been fired by my own cousin, I would not be standing here right now. And for me, every time something happens in life, new doors open, new routes open. And so what happened after I gave a talk in Nigeria, almost each and every one of those young kids added me on Facebook. <laughs> added me on the academy, LinkedIn, almost everything. And that was incredible. And w the beautiful thing is, one of them came back to me saying, he's wrote a book. He's wrote a book and he said thank you to the likes of Barack Obama and all those uh, big, big names from history. But he said the most special thank you for providing the inspiration was me. And to have felt so proud at that moment, I felt like crying. Because to, to be able to provide such inspiration for a young person to, to change the, the perception of life from struggling to seeing success is just the most proudest thing you can ever earn in life, that respect. And for me, it's just been an incredible, incredible journey. But it didn't stop there. It didn't stop there. Because providing inspiration, providing the knowledge, now providing the opportunity. Because having gone to so many different schools across, across the UK, it's not just providing the inspiration and you know, hear the talk, because he often goes through one ear, comes out the other, and that is the problem with young people. They read a book. Most of them don't even read books. Yet I, was, I don't even read books. Yet I wrote one. And yet that was a problem for me. I was facing a problem. How do I actually grab onto these teenagers and make something happen for them. And so 
I thought, let me create a program. Let me create a program, an interactive program that allows young people each and every step of the way to become entrepreneurs. Becoming what I call a twafer. For a young person to become a twafer, what happens? They have a business idea, they get mentored online. Once that happens, the mentor will actually guide them into setting up their own business. Once that process is done, because each and every teenager needs to be guided one way or another. Once that is done, they're able to sell their idea online. They're able to trade on a retail level online within this Twayfest program. Once that is done, once they're making their money, they're able to ask for the investment through what I call the Twayfest Den. And everyone likes the Dragon's Den, especially the young people. So I thought, let me get my own Dragon's on board. And so that's providing opportunity for young people to gain their investment, to take their ideas so far in life that they can be a Twayfer alumni, that they can be someone who was proud to have used the Twayfer network and been, been so happy. And so my journey continues because every time I go into a school, the problem I face is I've stepped in and they think it's a 25-year-old giving a talk, a 30-year-old giving a talk. And once I reveal my age, when I was 17, they thought, what, you're not 17? And the beautiful thing is I've had so many wedding proposals as well. <laughs> that is incredible. From, even from girls aged 14, 15, 16, 17, especially from Nigeria, though, that was, that was incredible. <laughs> and it is such a beautiful experience to have a, have, a, have a journey and then go on to actually inspire these young people. Because I always compare myself to, to one person. Duncan Bannatine from the Dragon's Den, he started his journey at the age of what, 30-ish? And I started mine at the age of 13. So that is the message I provide to young people. Anything you achieve within that 17-year period, you can call yourself a more successful, more enterprising entrepreneur than he is. Now you can take a seat in the Dragon's Den in, in, in no time. And there, there is the inspiration coming from a teenager passing on to a teenager is more successful than Richard Branson himself going into a classroom and saying, I'm a multi-billionaire. Doesn't work like that. And that is the mind and perception of a teenager. So I hope I've inspired you all to bring the world at your feet. Thank you very much.